so the sermon title that I gave was Flaming Tongues, and it's maybe kind of related. Um, but I love the imagery of flaming tongues. Uh, as we read this evening in the book of Acts, the apostles were all gathered together in one place, and suddenly there was a noise from heaven that sounded like a sound of mighty wind. It filled the house where they were all meeting. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions. And in some translations, it's flaming tongues or fiery tongues. Uh, but these tongues of flame, and each of the tongues settled on a person, and they were overtaken by the Spirit, and they began speaking and calling out in different languages. And so I'm certain that this is the gayest thing that I have ever read in the Bible. <laughs> Um, and I think there's a good chance that if I had stayed late enough at Pride last night, I may have witnessed this, perhaps been involved in such a situation. Um, but I love this scene that's described, and not just because of the sexual innuendo that I find there, but because of the passion and the message of liberation. When the apostles started speaking in different languages, some doubted the movement of the spirit and instead said, well, they must be filled with new wine. They must be a little bit drunk. But those who had heard knew that they weren't drunk, that they were sharing with others the work of God. When the people gathered heard their own languages being spoken to them, they were amazed. They were being communicated with in a way that they each understood that liberating moment of someone speaking a language that you understand after perhaps hearing so many that you had not, that moment of being communicated with in a way that you understand is tremendously moving and liberating, a moment of knowing just exactly the words to give to someone, the words to speak, and being in passion to do so is just as liberating as receiving the message as well. It's fitting that today we celebrate Pentecost, not just for this exciting imagery and the flaming tongues, but also because this is a day of celebration and liberation for us as LGBTQ people. This is our celebration of pride. It's also the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots. We're about to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Metropolitan Community Churches. I'm celebrating my own three-year anniversary as an ordained minister with the Metropolitan Community Churches. Um, so thank you. <laughs> um, so there's a lot to celebrate today in the way of liberation. So while we're celebrating, uh, so this year we're celebrating at General Conference the 50th anniversary of MCC, but it's technically, we've technically been a, a meeting for 51 years. Um, but 51 years ago, a, group, a small group of people gathered together in the living room of Reverend Elder Troy Perry, who claimed quite boldly that it, is po it was possible to be both gay and Christian. He was honest and loving when he said, the Lord is my shepherd and he knows I'm gay. Reverend Perry gathered with folks, with LGBTQ folks, and asserted that they were loved and beloved, they were whole and holy just exactly as they were, at a time when no other Christian churches were showing love or support, or at least not publicly showing love or support for LGBTQ people. Elder Troy's words were revolutionary and liberative. For the first time, a message of God's love was shared among LGBTQ people, and many found a new home when they were in great need. Not everyone responded to this new movement with kindness, and people in our churches have continued to fight ever since just to spread the message of liberation that has grown into a global denomination 51 years later. And 50 years ago, a group of LG LGBTQ people who were tired of being targeted in New York City worked to end harassment. Led by Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera, people at the Stonewall Inn started fighting back against the raids that they had ex been experiencing. They, riot, they started fighting back against the police raids, and their riot lasted for days as they sought li liberation for queer folk. And risking their own safety, they laid the foundation for what has now become pride celebrations across the country each June. A lot has happened in the last 50 years, um, but it was three years ago that I was ordained into ministry with MCC, promising to continue this work that has been done for the queer community. And I was a bit hesitant to accept the call into ministry, but it was MCC's work of liberation that we have done for over the past 50 years, and the work that we have done around sexuality and spirituality 
that, that strengthened that call and helped me to know that this was a place where I wanted to be doing work. Unfortunately, three years ago when I was ordained was also um, the anniversary of the shootings at the Pulse nightclub. A violent reminder during Latin X night um, that shook the community. This was a violent reminder for why the need for the fight for liberation must continue. And together with many recent acts of violence and laws that are targeting and discriminating against queer people, they also serve as a reminder of why the work needs to continue. And it's why we must collectively fight for liberation and to dismantle the systems of oppression that work to hold us down. This is a fight that MCC Boston has been fighting for decades, serving how and when you are called. And when I was reflecting and praying on this scripture, I thought about being called to speak and act and, and that message that moves through me, guided by the Spirit. And each time I thought about it and prayed about it, I kept coming back to the same word, which was gratitude. I'm grateful for the work of Troy and Sylvia and Marcia and all the people who came before me and risked their own lives and livelihoods for the sake of the queer community. I'm grateful for my first MCC pastor, Reverend Marilyn Bowens, who encouraged me to be the me that God knows, to be my whole authentic self, because isn't that what liberation is? And I'm grateful for the community here at MCC Boston and the work of liberation that you have all been doing for years, and I thank you. I thank you all for the work that you've been doing for creating a safe space for members of the LGBTQ community for years, I thank you for your rootedness in history and letting it guide you for work for the future. I thank you for supporting the youth in the area and each year going to Youth Pride, helping to undo some of the harm that has been caused by others. And I thank you for going to Pride each year in more than one state. Thank you for waking up early and for bringing cold drinks and snacks. And thank you for sharing the story of MCC and the story of MCC Boston with all those who pass by in a way that is invita invitational and in undoing some of the oppression that has been caused by others. Thank you for your willingness to learn and grow. Thank you for baking a cake every week to share. Thank you for putting together a bulletin every week. Thank you for finding someone to preach here every week. Thank you for being a place for new clergy to learn. Thank you for singing and welcoming newcomers, for using inclusive language. Thank you for gathering around a table to share meals together. Thank you for being family. Thank you for caring so deeply for others. And thank you for giving me a platform to, and a pulpit from which I could explore my own call to ministry. I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I've had to explore my own call here with you folks. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had three years ago to kneel in the earth with the weight of the hands of all those who loved and supported me, who were there in body and spirit, to feel their weight, the weight of their encouragement and responsibility as I entered ordained ministry, the responsibility to carry forward the movement of liberation. I know there is still much work to be done and I'm grateful for the opportunity to do it. It's spaces like this one here and the inspiration of those of the movement who helped me to listen for the spirit and find my voice to speak out against oppressive systems. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, recently, I was having a conversation with a person who benefits well from um, systems that I may find oppressive. Um, and he seemed to not be aware of the ways in which he was benefiting and perhaps the ways he was working uh, against what I, the work that I might be trying to do in liberation. And so he and I had a conversation and I was really nervous about going into this conversation and wondering if I might have, if I might be able to find the words that I needed to find to have this conversation. And when we sat down to speak with one another, I opened my mouth and I took a deep breath and some words fell out. I didn't breathe again until I had stopped talking and my tongue was numb and I was just thinking about how my tongue was numb and I wasn't sure if I was using any of the right words. But in the end, he nodded and he said, yeah, I agree. And so, 
Yeah, that was, I think, my face probably too, Paul. Um, uh, he said, I agree. And it, we had a wonderful conversation about what was the work that we could do together to try to change the system a little bit. And for me, that was a moment of the spirit moving through me, not even sure of my own words, but being given the words to speak that needed to be spoken to this person in a way that he could receive them, in a way that he could understand them, so that together we could work um, work for liberation together. And I know that perhaps not all conversations will go as well as that one, but perhaps the success of this one conversation might embolden me for the future, to speak to what needs to be spoken to, to name the truths that need to be named, both within the systems of which I work and that I'm a part, and the systems that work against me. And it takes all of us all of our messages and all the ways that we are called to share them and to continue this work for liberation. And sometimes it's the whisper of the spirit. Sometimes it is a fiery rage that propels us to action. But we need to follow in the direction that it leads, amplifying the voices of those who have been quieted, rioting when we need to riot, preaching love when we need to love, and working for liberation in all ways that we know how together, unceasingly, each as we are moved by the Spirit. Amen.